Hola, everybody. I don't usually get, well, almost never do I get political on this channel, but I'm going to do that today because I've been seeing some very odd comments online about New Zealand, about its democracy, its freedom, particularly in relation to its control of this global pandemic from COVID-19. So I've got some notes here. I was wondering where this was coming from, and then today I saw a wee clip from Laura Ingraham on Fox News. So it seems that it's coming from Rupert Murdoch's news outlets in the United States on Fox and in the UK and his outlets he owns over there. So I'll link to the little clip on Fox below. I can't put it in this video, but I'll give you a little link to the clip that I'm referring to here below. In it, Laura Ingraham says that Kiwis have, and I quote, a terrifying new response to rising COVID case numbers. They're throwing people into quarantine camps. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? It's actually not. This is a bunch of BS and spin and lies. New Zealand has quarantine because there is a virus that has caused a global pandemic and is killing vulnerable people. New Zealand has an adequate, for most times, public health care system, free at point of use, of which we are all very proud. However, particularly in winter months, it doesn't do very well always coping with our cases of winter flu in the normal course of a normal winter. If we had allowed COVID to run rampant in our country, our healthcare system would probably have quite quickly become overwhelmed. People who had gotten sick with anything else that needed hospital treatment or healthcare may have found themselves unable to access it, and that would have been detrimental to the health of the whole country. And so we decided we wanted a strong response to this virus. The definition of quarantine, which has been in use for centuries, restriction on movement or goods intended to prevent the spread of disease or pests. It is a normal public health response to a novel virus, which is lethal for vulnerable people. New Zealand has a policy of returning citizens and residents and the other occasional important more essential worker which is in short supply in New Zealand who may be allowed to come into the country and they're very few at the moment, they have a policy of a 14 day quarantine. It is a choice to undergo this quarantine because if it is so offensive to you, don't go there. You're quite free to not go to New Zealand and undergo 14 days of quarantine. Quarantine facilities, government run, are in four and five star hotels. And I'll put some pictures of some of these places in here. They're actually quite nice. All your food is provided for, all your needs are met, exercise out every day. It's only 14 days unlimited Wi-Fi, Netflix. For returning citizens who intend to stay in New Zealand for at least 90 days or longer, the cost of this 14 day stay in a four or five star hotel is completely covered by the government. For everyone else, they have to pay for it. $3,100 for the first adult, and I think it's $950 or $850 for any second adult sharing the same room which we think is quite fair. So that eliminates the possibility of wealthier people within the country leaving the country for an overseas holiday and then the government footing the bill for their quarantine upon return. With a strict border and quarantine at the border, that means that within the country, New Zealanders have complete freedom to go about their business as usual, and they are. They are holidaying in their now international tourist free country. I have relatives who are just doing an amazing huge tour of the South Island. 
They are free to go to bars, cafes, restaurants, nightclubs, packed sports stadiums, and packed music concert venues. Complete freedom to do all of these things, and freedom from COVID. Laura Ingram says that there are rising cases of COVID in New Zealand. I mean, just, she's in the United States. Have you looked at the state of your country, Laura? My goodness. The number of current active cases of COVID in New Zealand is 70. 66 of those are at the border in managed isolation. Four of those are old found community cases in isolation in the community. The last found active community case was on the 18th of October, 10 days ago. Since then, with extensive testing and rigorous contact tracing, they've not found another community case of COVID. Like I said, they have freedom from COVID within the country, and that's how they like it. New Zealand just had an election, and it ranks for its democracy fourth in the world, behind first Norway, then Iceland, then Sweden, then New Zealand. New Zealand has a very healthy and highly participated in democracy, highly regarded internationally. I don't think Laura knows that. USA ranking, 25. New Zealand just recently had an election in which the government led by Jacinda Ardern won in an historically unprecedented landslide. The voter turnout was 82.5%. That's pretty high. My feeling is the current government won a second term because the majority of New Zealanders are really happy with the government's response to COVID. They are very happy that within the country they're absolutely free to conduct their business and their lives without fear from COVID. They are free from COVID. From time to time, with the odd talk of opening up the border, I see a very, very strong response online from New Zealanders and my friends and family back home that I talk to. They do not want the border opened up. They want to continue to have their freedoms within New Zealand. Speaking of freedom, because Laura ends with, anyone who loves freedom, she says, from her seat in the United States. Again, the Freedom Index, compiled by the Cato Institute. New Zealand is ranked number one. USA is ranked number 15. Again, Laura, I think you need to look within your own country. And this little wee rant, I know it's a bit ranty, sorry guys, but it just really annoys me so much when What's happening within my country, which I know really, really well, because I've got friends and family there. I'm in contact by Skype with them very, very regularly every week. It just annoys me when I see what's happening in my country completely misrepresented or just outright lies told about it, particularly by news outlets. I can hardly call Fox a news outlet, but that's what they say they are. They're actually entertainment, but by news outlets in the United States, it's so dishonest. So if you're still watching Fox News, I strongly suggest this glaring example of complete lies, I think that means, among many others, but at least this one, maybe you should get some news from another source. I'm not saying completely stop watching Fox, but maybe you need to have a bit of balance. That might be a good idea, because they are giving you utter lies. Okay, here ends the rant. I think that's all I had to say. I'm just going to finish off with, as a democratically elected government, re-elected with a landslide, the people of New Zealand are expressing their will. They want a strong response to COVID because they want to continue to have the freedom to go about their business and lives within the country and they want to have complete freedom from COVID as well. We do not want our grandparents and our aunties and uncles to die. We do not want our healthcare system overwhelmed. 
We do not want to have to go back into any other kind of restriction, freedom of movement with any kind of further lockdown. The six weeks they did in March, April and into May, that was all they needed to do. Because they're community minded and they're thinking of each other, not just themselves. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you for watching and I'll try and be less political in future.